Going to be a big crowd as we crowd a championship with number one Maryland and number two Penn State. Alongside Carol Lentz, I'm Dean Linky. Let's take a look at the starting lineups in this one. First for the Penn State Nittany Lions, a pretty solid and consistent lineup for Charmorette Curtis. Throughout the whole season, it's a lineup that's been working for them. And I love the fact that Madison Morano, number seven, is getting a lot more playing time. She is an instrumental player in the center of the field. Charmorette Curtis directing traffic. And how about the starting lineup for the Maryland Terrapins, led by the league MVP, Velma Luce. So critical <laughs> in clutch situations. What an exciting player to watch. And that's a strong backfield as well. I think Courtney Dina has also been playing very well. Number 20 in black. Dina playing with that broken finger. And how about Maryland as we take a look at our State Farm State of Success. Spread in the wealth, six different goal scorers in two tournament games. It's a rematch of a regular season game featured right here on the Big Ten Network. The game was in Happy Valley. Penn State came in super hyped, perhaps too hyped, including number 18, the transfer from Maryland, Maura Pudge. Not her best game. In fact, after the game, went into the office of Char Marette Curtis and said, Coach, I'll do better next time. And here she is back on the field where she won Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Penn State Nittany Lions travel well. There's a lot of blue and white in the crowd to mix with that red and white as well. They're going to be loud and proud here today, Kara. What a beautiful day for a championship. I have always said this, Maryland is such a great host and location for a field hockey community. It's an epicenter of the country for the sport, and it's great to see so many fans on hand today. All right, Maryland and their familiar home blacks, the Penn State Nittany Lions and their white, blue, and white. We are so thrilled to be with you just after noon Eastern on the Big Ten Network as we begin the championship game of the 2016 Big Ten Field Hockey Tournament. We are out here early, Kara, and everybody pumped up, walking with a bounce. Penn State will build it out of the back. In that game up in Happy Valley, they alternated goals early, and then Penn State Saw themselves fall behind five to two, got two goals late, but the final score was Maryland five, Penn State four. That was in the regular season. An exciting last part of that game, the last eight minutes. It was really a game that had you by the toes. Emma Rissinger. Started at the forward line on Friday, pushed back to the midfield as you'll see Linnea Gonzalez pushing forward. And Linnea Gonzalez is right now in front of Jenny Rizzo. So a little bit of a tactical change. Maryland with Missy Mahar, she's made some adjustments in all three games depending on the teams they play. And part of the reason their personnel is just phenomenal. We told you on Thursday they've got Team A and Team A1 or <laughs> however you want to break it down. Two starting lineups, pretty phenomenal depth. Charmorette Curtis, how about her? Now in her 30th season. Combined though, you see that record at Penn State 463, but guess what, all time, she has 499 wins. How amazing would it be to win the Big Ten title and make it number 500? Pretty phenomenal. Quick restart. Ramley's been effective. So low to the ground, out of the goal was Sarah Bates. And we haven't even got to her story as well as Sarah Bates, a transfer from Maryland, Ginny Bramley. Trying to score a transfer from Penn State, rather. Look at this body control by Jeannie Bramley. Small steps, breakdown steps, is able to split two defenders, get immediately inside the circle. Bates had to come out and make a decision and a good stop against Bramley. Foul there as Kelly LePage goes down in a collision with Madison Morano. Here's Lane Holsbor. Missy Mahark said she was the player of the game. 
and that overtime win over Northwestern. Holsborough pushing it forward to the freshman LePage. A lot of exciting freshmen on the field for Missy Maharg as they continually reload. Maryland has won the last six meetings and 11 of the last 12 overall in this series with the Nittany Lions. Penn State's most recent win over Maryland came in a 1-0 upset of the two-time defending national champion in the second round of the NCAA tournament, that back in 2007. And how about Missy Maharg? Now in her 29th season, she got 500 last year. Big celebration to everybody that even thought about field hockey sent great wishes to Missy Maharg. Seven-time national champ, nine-time national coach of the year. So much fun seeing those videos, congratulating Missy a year ago. You gotta believe they're cranking up some video love for Shar Moret Curtis, either after this one or gotta believe Penn State will make the NCAA tournament win or lose. Penn State going to be a lot more aggressive on the press this game compared to their earlier meeting against Maryland. They were in a fall away press and that changed in the second half, a lot more aggressive. So. The start of this game, it's a big point and key for Penn State to be more aggressive on that press. This is the second time these two teams have met in the Big Ten tournament. Emma Rissinger, who's obviously still here with Maryland, scored the only goal in a one nothing win in the 2014 semifinals in Ann Arbor, a tournament won by the Northwestern Wildcats. Jenny Bramley. Bramley with a couple goals in the tournament. And Bramley will take it away from Gonzalez. Bramley cuts back in. Putch was inside the circle. Gocknauer are putting some pressure on LePage. Dembrowski had it for a moment, she lost it. It was Dembrowski that found Hutch inside the circle for the only goal in that thriller against Michigan. We'll show you that goal at halftime. It is a rocket shot from Maura Putch. Here's Bramley in, and there's Bates. As I started to tell you, Bates, the transfer from Penn State, now a goal for Maryland. Fantastic save by Bates. Maryland is making it very difficult for Penn State to even receive the ball. They're playing good physical defense and a lot of numbers behind the ball. All Big Ten superstar from Holland, Aurelia Meyer. Back to Selkos. Now Meyer along the end line. Well documented her success. Punch, turns, shoots, and baits. She had it covered, it looks like, either way. And there's Putch with an early shot. Penn State quick in the circle. As soon as they're inside the circle, they're really getting good looks on net and taking advantage of the opportunities. Putch just puts the ball into space and gets a good crank on it. Meyer pushing it forward, looking for Bramley. Speaking of good crank, how about that crank Putch put on that goal against Michigan? Wow, I mean. That was a rocket, lifted, far post. It's a hard shot to stop. Grace Bosden, the graduate senior transfer, coming over from the UK, what a pickup. The Big Ten Defender of the Year. It's one year to do it and walks away with some valuable hardware. She'd rather have the Big Ten title though, I can assure you. Quick whistle. Lane Holsborough, so quick, so efficient with her passing, and as I say that, a little bit off kilter. As you talk to Char Moret Curtis, and she said, we gotta handle L and L, lane and loose. <laughs> Courtney Dina. Rissinger had it for a moment. Dina, again, playing with that broken finger. She's got a cast on her left hand. Didn't start on Thursday, but Missy Mahard said she's just so valuable to start. And 
so she's going to play with that cast. She's done a phenomenal job coming into that side back position with the injury of Delaney Leathers and Courtney Dina not having played field hockey for very long before committing to play at the University of Maryland, but she's so athletic and in great game sense, and she's a good marker. It's gonna be a fun matchup between Dina and Putch as well. Sent in, and rolls away, all the way out of bounds. Courtney Dina, here, she was a great soccer player, great lacrosse player, but she told her parents she wanted to play the most difficult sport. She said she wanted to play field hockey. They walked into a sporting goods store, and they asked for a video for field hockey. It was Missy Maharg, as Maryland is inside the circle. And a whistle, and it'll be the first penalty corner. So Courtney Dina brings home this video, her mom Frederica telling us after the game on Friday, and for hours upon hours stood in front of the TV, banged up the room listening to Missy Maharg as a seventh grader said she wanted to go to Maryland to play field hockey. Missy Maharg had never even heard of her, obviously, and look at her now, playing for another Big Ten title, number 20. Phenomenal, phenomenal athlete. She was also sporting a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sweatshirt, which I thought was all the more fitting for the type of fighter Dina is. So Velma Luce. With the first penalty corner. Stopped by Rissinger. Boston will leave it. Now Hanks cranks. Deflected by Dombrowski. Lane Holsbor. That was deflected as well. Fretz was over there, kicked away by Jenny Rizzo. <laughs> Gonzalez. Wow, Gonzalez kept it low, and it was on the frame of the cage. Hanks too long, look at Luce spreading out to try to keep it alive. Velma Luce, outstanding tennis player at Maryland. Take a look back at Maryland's previous corner opportunity. Play at the top, option pass to the right, and well read by Dembrowski. And you saw Brooke Barasic kind of hesitate a little bit as to whether to commit over to that option pass, but instead Dombrowski does a good job. Keeps her stick on the ground, balls deflected. We've played 10 minutes. Still zeros. Number two, Penn State. Number one, Maryland. It's an absolutely splendid weekend here in College Park as we salute the University of Maryland and their fine athletic staff for being wonderful hosts. There's Rissinger. As we told you earlier, she scored the only goal the last two times, the last time these two teams met, that is, in 2014 in the Big Ten Tournament. by Emily Errett. Into the game now is Shea Cannon. It's been 10 minutes since Penn State has taken a shot as they came out early, was put some pressure on Bates, but since then have not been in the circle. Velma Luce, right side, pops it into space. Sophie Pelzer scored a goal on Friday. Skylar Fretz, second team all Big Ten. Fretz playing a little bit more on the attack this game. Side backs are going to be key for Penn State. That's certainly an area of the field that Maryland could really exploit with the speed that they have on their forward line and the movement they have on their forward line. Played into the circle, through Bramley, through Cannon, and it'll be back to Maryland.
Missy Maharg telling us yesterday at practice her corner knee D needs to be better. They've got to manage Penn State's forward line connection with their midfield on a string, she said, and then try to exploit Penn State's side backs. Thought she could find some mismatches on that back line. That was the game plan coming from Coach Maharg as they were getting ready yesterday. Charmerette Curtis saying communication vital. Maryland the best in the country at interchanging. They need organization, composure to handle any kind of adversity here on Maryland's home field as it's played in front, deflected away. And then as we said earlier, always know where L and L is, Lane Holsbor and Velma Luce. Composure is certainly a characteristic of this Maryland team that you see game in and game out. Very mature team, a lot of communication happening on the field. And this team is tough. Rissinger is looking for Holesbor, taken away by the freshman Maddie Morano. It's interesting, Maddie Morano was asking her sister Casey any pointers for the Big Ten tournament. She said, it's hard and it's fast and you have to play tough and just love to hear what Maddie said about her sister. She said she loves having that support on her team by her best friend. Two sisters extremely close and both stemming from the powerhouse Eastern Regional High School in New Jersey. Casey Morano has been a little under the weather. Actually, she's had a fever this week. Her mom, known as Doobie Morano, played at Lock Haven and when Charmerette Curtis first took over Penn State that initial year, Doobie Morano's Lockhaven team beat Penn State. And then ironically last year, a year of growth for Penn State, Lockhaven beat Penn State again. So Doobie Morano, as in the romper room, Doobie or don't be, she picked up that name as a kid and it stuck. Fascinating woman as we spent some time with the Penn State and Maryland families the last couple days. Velma Luce. Luce, seeing with it. Her focus in the circle, Rissinger. What a great pass from Velma Luce, trying to find Rissinger. Rissinger is such a fun player to play with. I recall a couple years ago in her freshman campaign, she was out here 20 to 30 minutes before practice with a bucket of balls and a coach and just practicing getting shots on net by herself, putting in the extra work. Ton of energy coming from number seven. Well, as you see number 15 there, I would practice a lot as well because you know she's gonna find you. <laughs> if you're open, number 15 will indeed find you. One of the best in the country, without question, Velma Luce. Sophie Pelzer, Linnea Gonzalez now back to midfield. Von Esbeck. Now Rissinger again. What a great ball. Penn State seems a little disorganized right now. Having some difficulty breaking the ball out and then creating the counterattack. Not many numbers up the field on those lateral cuts either. More a punch right down the spine. And Kerry Hank says, no, thank you. Great block tackle coming from Hanks. Brooke Barasic. Barasic probably deserves a lot more attention as well. She's had an outstanding year, a year where Putch and Meyer got a lot of the accolades. Part of the 2015 Big Ten All-Tournament team comes into this game with 81 shots, 49 of those on net. Staying low is Rizzo. It'll come back to Penn State. Great movement on the baseline by Lene Gonzalez. Again, the way that this player has improved her individual stick skills and strength over the ball, evident right there. Jenny Rizzo with a shutout and a high five. Sarah Bates also with a shutout. So much on the line between two of the best in the Big Ten and in the country. The Maryland Terrapins 
What a welcome addition to the Big Ten, including field hockey, where they are always vying for a national championship, let alone a conference championship. And who knows, they could have that kind of team this year again as well. Great freshmen coming forward, including Kelly LePage, Lane Holsbor, one of the superstars from Holland. Pretty good chance, too. The winner of this game will be able to host the first round of the NCAA tournament. Of course, those 18 teams being named tonight for the NCAA selection. No score here. It's back from the TV timeout. Penn State, of course, in white and blue. Maryland in all black. Big crowd. Really hardly any seats open at all. And with hundreds standing along the sideline, it's basically standing room only here. You knew it would be as Penn State travels well and they love their field hockey here at Maryland. Essentially the house that Missy built. Von Esbeck, Von Esbeck has her pocket picked by Fretz. Penn State crowd, loud and proud. They always travel well. Stick breaking loose from Holesbore as Bramley going the other way. Bramley across midfield. It's Ballsden trying to slow down the Penn State counter. Ballsden creating a little bit of a counter herself, being all the way up at the 25 yard line. The shape of the defenders in the backfield allowed them to push those outside backs all the way to the perimeter of the circle. Too strong for Velma Luce. Great tackle coming in from Anuk Van Osbeck. Gives her team a chance to create a counterattack. Kerry Hanks right there too. Boston now over to Hanks. Seeing Hanks drop just a little bit more here. Alongside Balsden. There's Balsden and Hanks. Dina pushing up from that left side. Page trying to stop it. Can you imagine though, seventh grade, you're like, I want to play field hockey. I need a video to learn. <laughs> and then in their house, they said, there was just damage all over the place, <laughs> knocking over lamps and everything else. And she would just stand in front of the television, listening to Missy Hard in the seventh grade. They were great people, weren't they? Absolutely. Yep. Huge Buckeye fans. Yeah, from Pickerington, Ohio. Ohio State really wanted Dina, but remember, <laughs> she had Missy Maharg in her head since the seventh grade. Out of bounds. There's Rissinger, one of the smallest players on the field, but she is dynamic everywhere, loose with eyes in the back of her head. How she knew Brooke Adler was there, I have no idea. Brooke Adler on the turn. Linnea Gonzalez. Nea Gonzalez, your Big Ten Freshman of the Year a year ago. She's taken on a different role this year. Last year she was pretty much stuck up in front, scoring a lot of goals. This year more responsibility in the midfield. Two Big Ten Freshman of the Year on the field. Moya Putch, Mora Putch rather, winning it at Maryland in 14. Gonzalez winning it at Maryland last year. Loose, tough ball back to Von Asbach, but she's got balls in there for safety. Oh, 
Holzbohr just always makes herself available. She is consistently an option in the midfield. She shows well, she shows deliberately. Brooke Adler to Maddie McGuire. McGuire's got to go. McGuire with the spin. McGuire in the circle. Loose will turn. Slaps at it. And the whistle against Belma Loose as Maddie McGuire spinning Emily Arrett into the ground. And that's exactly where you can see those side backs can really be exploited by Marilyn. Madison McGuire, what a fantastic move. Cuts the ball deep back to the inside. Look how much space she has. Look to her net. Pass was a little off by the time the ball released from her stick. Maryland has a lot of promise in this player as she progresses through her four years at Maryland. She has scored a goal here. It's part of the 2016 Big Ten Field Hockey Tournament. Emily Arrett, by the way, has that left leg bandage very high, not 100% healthy. So we'll give her a pass there as McGuire able to spin her around. She can't plant quite as well. And once again, diving for it is Rissinger flying over on the other side. Fretz finds Meyer as she tucks inside. Maryland's been very effective with cornering the ball into the center section of the field when Penn State is trying to break the ball out. It's well executed and usually that second or third 50-50 ball, Maryland comes up with it. More a punch with Dina. Trying to stay with her. Punch pushes it into the circle, now out. Punch will run it back again. Tries to slap it back in, sees if Bramley can get there. It's still loose, Bramley still pushed out of there as Bates just trying to protect it. Penn State coming up with the ball in between the 25 yard line. This is what they do well. They have not been able to get into this room and quite just yet. Putch running it all the way across the field. And you know, it's interesting sitting here on the sidelines at the beginning of the game. Maura Putch during the warm up, she was just kneeling down or crouching down with a stone cold look on her face. She came into this game ready, she came into this game focused. Yeah, she was not happy at all with how she played in Happy Valley during the regular season matchup against Maryland, a 5-4 loss. She knew it, Charmorette Curtis knew it, they talked about it, and now she's got a chance to do it again here in the Big Ten Field Hockey Championship game. There's a lot of punches in the house that came down from State College. Carly Selkos. Penn State, their fans are loving their football team right now. Some people say they're a top 10 team. Looking for Sophie Pelzer, Fretz, who has had an outstanding tournament for the Nittany Lions. She's been challenged today too. She's had to step up a lot and sometimes she's getting two Maryland forwards directly on her. She's been very composed in the backfield, but she has her hands full. Charmette Curtis has gone to her bench. Cassie Klein has come on, as has Mary Neal Smith. Klein a sophomore, Mary Neal Smith a sophomore, wearing 14 and 19 respectively for the Penn State Nittany Lions. That's the second time that there's been a ball coming out of the backfield that's thread about 30 or 40 yards directly to Rissinger on the outside. Loose in the circle, Rissinger, what a flick! Are you kidding me? Rissinger learning from loose, the practice pays <laughs> off, and it's 1-0 Maryland. Rissinger hustles all the time. This ball started all the way in the backfield. Rissinger holding the space on the outside, changes her angle, dishes it off to Velma Luce, and then puts herself in great position <laughs> to knock one over the head of Jenny Rizzo. And it's interesting, in the Big Ten tournament last year, we saw Lane Holsbore pull off the same type of move. Sixth goal of the season for Rissinger. The surprise on her face. 
It was almost as if I've seen Velma do that, as you talked about. I've seen Lane do that. I don't know I could do it as Luce gets her eighth assist and has the number one seeded Maryland Terps on top of the Penn State Nittany Lions one to nothing. Take another look at the nifty stick work of Rissinger. <laughs> Just gets a touch on it. It almost seemed like it was a play on situation as well because it looked like it hit the foot of a Penn State defender inside the circle. Morano. Cleaned up by Brooke Adler. And here comes the hero at the moment, Rissinger. She'll drop it to Pelzer. Pelzer now to Holzbohr. Quality players from Holland. Holzbohr in, back across. Looking for the South African loose. Kelly LePage with a swing and a miss. And it's going to be a green card. Let's see who they're calling that on. Looks like Pelzer. So Pelzer stood out a couple minutes, the freshman from the Netherlands. Gottenauer. Loose whistle. Barasic quickly. Nothing in the circle for Penn State. Having a difficult time building the attack, don't have numbers around the ball, and passing and receiving skills are a bit delayed. Von Asbeck getting the whistle. Interchange transition game of Maryland looking very efficient here on their home field. Has had great possession throughout the course of this first half. You can sense how much in control this team is just by their passing and possession. <laughs> Laura Putch got her stick on it, but picked up by Rissinger. Rissinger looking for LePage. Gocknauer, amazing student athlete, Gocknauer. <laughs> Wonderful crowd in College Park, the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex for the top two seeds in the Big Ten playing for the Big Ten Field Hockey Championship. And Murano steps in on Rissinger. Sophie Pelzer out of that green card and back on the field. Numbers are all square. Von Osbeck finding space to LePage. LePage to Pelzer. Pelzer will have it for a moment, then lose it. Pick that up again by a player from the Netherlands. And Von Osbeck. Kelly Page, very disciplined with tracking her body and the defender in one direction and passing off the other. Only puts about two or three touches on the ball. She's been great at that midfield position. Hard tackle coming from behind on Rissinger from Selkos. Under five minutes remaining here in the first. Maryland with a one nothing lead. Hanks, their head on a swivel. We'll give it to Dina. Dina has it deflected. The counter could be on. Look at Dina, though, with that effort. It's still loose, though. Mora Punch has it. And how about that battle between the Big Ten Defender of the Year, Boston, and Mora Punch? All starts with Punch coming off with a good deflection 
creates the counterattack, and this is just a pure foot race between Putch and the Big Ten Defender of the Year. Excellent look by our fantastic Big Ten Network crew. Under four minutes remaining here in the first. Grace Balsden from the UK, the graduate senior. Sarah Sprink graduates as an all Big Tenner. They need a center back. And here comes Grace Balsden to save the day for the Turks. Unbelievable on penalty corners as well. Seen hurt score off a penalty corner this weekend here in College Park. Hanks, a little bit of pressure, picks it up on her stick, dances around. Dombrowski comes in support. Great defense by Penn State. Borosic in the circle, looking for a whistle, doesn't get it. Sticks are, you can hear the sticks clanging right now. Borosic was looking for a whistle, didn't get one. Seemed like it was an obstruction call. Brosick had the ball possessed and looked like it could have been a forward movement for her, but instead free hit for Maryland coming out. I haven't seen Carrie Hanks when she's been handling the ball off of turnovers in the backfield, give away the ball or throw interceptions. She's been very composed and smart with how she's coming out of the backfield. And she's been very strong over the ball. Pelzer will now make way for Lane Holsborg. who gets a little bit of a rest. Here's the goal scorer, Emma Rissinger. Rissinger gets a whistle. They'll quickly work to restart it. Gonzalez over to Holsborg. Got a little rest next to Missy Maharg. Selkos. Putch trying to help out as well. That defense works. will come back to Penn State, who has picked up some of the game here in the last five minutes. The team in white and blue looking good. Just as I say that, they turn it over. It's in the circle. Gonzalez back to Holzbohr. Outside of the circle, diagonal pass looking for Velma Luce. Of course, Velma Luce from South Africa. We mentioned the outstanding players from the Netherlands. Velma can speak to them. She speaks Afrikaans, so she can help the other girls out in practice from Holland. Although when you talk to Lane and Sophie, their English is fantastic. It's amazing how embedded they've become great groups both teams excellent people coaching staff administration support staff solid citizens Maryland with five shots to Penn State's three just one corner so far that's been for Maryland Dina feeling the pressure from Penn State Dina just swats it away clean defense good use of her body good control of her body and just stays directly in front of Putch been doing a great job going up against one of the leading scorers in this conference Velma Luce had it for a moment. Frets making a move. There's still time here. 25 seconds left. Murano looking for some movement. And a white jersey, that one high off of Holzbohr. Boy, Lane Holzbohr, we talked to her after the game on Friday. Just the amount of physicality she endures as she took that Murano shot off her thigh. She's tough. Lane Holzbohr, to say the least. And that is the whistle. And after 35, Maryland on a goal from Emma Rissinger leads Penn State one to nothing in the Big Ten Tournament Championship game. All Maryland in that first half possessed the ball for about 30 of the 35 minutes. Getting a lot of great opportunities, controlling the center of the midfield as well. A lot of parallels between 2016 and 2012. Boy, incredible. That brings you chills as you think about all those parallels and you get into the great history of both of these teams and two legendary head coaches, to say the least. And speaking of legendary head coaches, with 499 wins all-time, Sharma Red Curtis 
joins us now, Shar, and down a go. What was the message to the team at halftime? Possession, possession. We uh, started out really well, and then we sort of got a little frantic, so we need to go back and possess the ball so we can get opportunities inside our 25. How do you prevent those long uh, midfield passes that are ending up on the stick of number seven for Maryland? Yep, yep, we got to get Moe's got to come back and play that line. And, and Carly and, uh, you know, our, our Aurelia really need to communicate that to her. We just talked about that. Yeah, it's just, she's got to get in that line. Shar, thanks for being with us and good luck in the second All half. Right. Yep. All right, tight lines. <laughs> tight lines. Maryland leading Shar Moret Curtis, the 2016 Big Ten Coach of the Year and the Penn State Nitty Lions by a score of one to nothing. Alongside the former captain and all Big Ten midfielder, Carol Lentz, I'm Dean Linke. Delighted to be with you on Championship Sunday on the Big Ten Network on what is an absolutely splendid late fall day here in College Park, Maryland. And Aurelia Meyer now playing at that forward position, the same exact thing that they did in the previous encounter this year against Maryland. Needs more offense, Meyer's the one. It's Morano, Meyer is in. Great call by Carol Lentz. Meyer trying to turn, Dina is there. Penalty corner earned. So Meyer up top and a penalty corner right off the bat here to start the second. I think one of the major components that helps you go through a postseason run is the play of the underclassmen. Sometimes the seniors and the all-stars have a lot of pressure on them. That's where the underclassmen can come in, take that edge off, and I love to see the performance of Madison Morano in the center of the field. So the first corner coming for Penn State right out of the locker room, and here they go. More a punch will handle the insert. Gottnauer. We'll take a lot of the stops. Look for Meyer. Potentially Selkos. Bramley could also find it. Here's Gocknauer. Meyer, a skip. Meyer in. Tied at one. And what a start to the second half. Meyer has so much strength in the lower part of her body. She can put a lot of oomph on her sweeps. Good take off of the stick stop, and that ball goes directly down the belly of Maryland's corner defense, and it seems like it went underneath the body of Sarah Bates. I don't know how it squeezed underneath, but it got through. Aurelia Meyer, her 10th goal of the season. She burst onto the scene last year, right here on the Big Ten Network, scoring a hat trick and a 3-2 thriller over Iowa. An interview that I will never forget as she broke down every single goal, had us laughing with joy, and she plays the game with joy. And that joy now is translated to a 1-1 tie, and Meyer is on it now. Meyer, quick touch. Selko's pushing forward. Maryland, if any team can handle any kind of adversity at all, it's Maryland. They do not get rattled, folks, ever. Yeah, this is a team that is 9-0 when they're leading at the half. Boy, tactically, at halftime, talking to Former Maryland player Faye Curran, who, like Balson, was a graduate senior that came over for one year, talking about the fact that the coaches sticking with their horses as Penn State kept seven players on the entire time for 35 minutes. Maryland kept six players. That is not how the rotations have normally been, but it's all or nothing here trying to win a Big Ten title. Well, the backfield for Penn State stays consistent. Those four in the backfield, and then Dembrowski, see her on the turf a lot of the time. Penn State has a roster, may not be as deep as Maryland's. What a start to the second half, though, for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Charmorette Curtis going for career victory number 500 as she picked 34 of them up at Boston College before returning to her alma mater where she spent just a short 30 years. <laughs> and looks like she's gonna do another 20. And she's sitting at 499. 
Holzbohr to Rissinger. Rissinger deflected by Selkos, cleaned up by Meyer. Holzbohr with some pressure. And Meyer able to protect it. What a pass from Meyer, central to Murano. Bramley trying to scoop it up. Dembrowski can't get to it. It'll stay with the Nittany Lions. Courtney Dina with that cast, working around Putch. Von Osbeck punches there, she'll get the whistle. It's gonna be hard for Luce to get to that, and Skylar Fretz is there, but Luce. Bring it up, bring it up, come Hit her foot, so they'll give it back. Deflected neatly there by Holzborn, and it bounced up on her foot. She knew it. Knocked out of bounds. Oh, that one, yeah, did go out of bounds. Thought maybe they thought Von Asbeck had kept it in. <laughs> Bramley turns. Looking for Putch, and Meyer stays up top as well. She's just outside the circle. Bramley's there as well. Meyer is behind her. She was hoping Meyer was going to be able to get around Von Asbeck. Either way, the whistle back to Maddie Morano and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Dina again placing some really good pressure on Maura Putch before she receives the ball. I have a feeling that if Dina were ever to do one of those exercises where you shadow the person that has the ball just with their footwork. Dina would probably be on point. The same movement as that opposition. Solid with her defense. Good decisions when stepping up and coming away with the ball. Low to the ground. Taken away by Penn State. It was Selkos with the interception. Dembrowski now with Morano offering support. She'll come all the way back to the second team all big tenor and frets. Right back to Dembrowski. Dembrowski looking for Bramley and there's Dina again. <laughs> Emily Errett laboring just a bit with all of that bandage high on her left leg. <laughs> Brooke Adler, 23, has stayed in the game. Now Penn State trying to work a little bit more possession as it's been 25 minutes since Maryland's last shot. Bess Bovlander has come into the game for her first action of the tournament, wearing number 17. So Bovlander in. Bovlander's gotten a couple minutes in the semifinal game, and she's getting a lot more in this game today. Good possession skills coming out of the backfield for Bovlander. Pushed Carly Selkos up to that midfield position when Meyer went up to the forward. So a bit of an adjustment in the backfield, but it seems to be working for Penn State. Bovlander, good with her one and two touch. Good distribution skills along with threats. That's a dynamic that's working for Penn State. Bovlander's uncle, known as one of the greatest to ever play over in Holland. And she was a key part of that trip for the Penn State Nittany Lions over to Holland this summer. Murano. Murano. Dina, perfectly timed drop of the stick to win it back. Adler had it for a moment. Gottenauer. 
Murano didn't have a lot of options around her, really taking 1v3 situations with trying to beat numerous Maryland defenders, but needs to have some options. The communication has to be higher for Penn State. Dombrowski getting it back to Meyer. Meyer along the end line. Bramley, what a trap, what a shot! In, and Penn State leads it! Two to one, Bramley! Again, the rate at which Penn State can get shots off in this circle is so detrimental to an opposing defense. Good move by Dembrowski. She hasn't got many touches on the ball in this game, but when she does, she can create. Aurelia Meyer controls the baseline so well. And then even with two defenders collapsing on Bramley, she gets a nice reverse chip off. Wow, what an execution. Bramley puts it into space, draws it away from the defense, and allows herself to set up with her feet and her hands. 13th goal of the season for Bramley. Three of them have come this extended weekend at College Park. And if you go back to that 5-4 loss in Happy Valley for Penn State to Maryland, here's the deal. Bramley was playing in the midfield. Dombrowski was playing deep. They decided to bring Shea Cannon off the bench, slid Bramley back up to her more comfortable forward line. With Dombrowski right behind her, and Penn State has been rolling ever since. Rissinger. Rissinger. Looking to get it to Velma Luce. Gonzalez. Over to Holzbor. Can't find Luce. And now the whistle. And Courtney Dina has had her hands full through this game with the 1v1 marking inside the circle. And take a look, good defensive positioning. And Bramley just so tight with her reception and getting it into space. But overall, Courtney Dina has been doing a good job, especially along Putch. That gives you an idea of how dynamic Bramley is when she's inside the circle. She has great body control, small steps, very strong over the ball. Gottenauer, now to Cannon. Maryland. Pelzer with a nifty touch. Penn State searching for their first tournament win since 2012. Back across though, what a save by Rizzo. And cleared out of there by Brooke Barazic. Emma Rissinger right there, just salivating at the mouth, looking for any opportunity. Gonna see a goalie change here from Maryland. Sarah Holiday in place in net, as opposed to Sarah Bates. Smart move for the goalkeeping change. Sarah Bates on that corner. She just wasn't down on the ground with the hit coming from Meyer at the top. And this is one of the great things that you can utilize with two goalkeepers that if one isn't on, you can put in the other. This is a goalkeeping staff and players that have a lot of respect for each other. They push each other every single day in practice and in games. It was one nothing at halftime. Maryland on top. We talked to Charmarette Curtis just before the start of the second half. She wanted more possession. She got it right from the opening whistle, earned a penalty corner, and then that possession led to the second goal and it's 2-1 Penn State. Plenty of time left though, 22 and chains as Missy Mahard pulling Bates 
for Sarah Holiday. They pretty much paid, played equal minutes. In fact, I believe in this game was when Bates finally passed Holiday in minutes played. Holiday, it'll be neck and neck after this one. Part of the reason why you have two quality goaltenders. Inside the circle, punched out of there. Kicked out of there by Rizzo. Jenny Rizzo, talked to her at practice yesterday, voted by every player on the team as the funniest player, big personality. Said her dad had all kinds of corny jokes at the dinner table and now she uses them. Here's Meyer on the spin. Meyer looking to get in the circle. Cannon was there. Jenny Rizzo, part of the U21 U.S. national team, as is Lene Gonzalez in 10 for black. Numerous athletes on the field today have the opportunity to represent their countries. Lene <laughs> Gonzalez. Dombrowski stepped up for a moment. Holzbohr. Dina with Rissinger in front of her. She'll push it to Emma Rissinger. She's got the only goal so far for the number one seeded Terps. Right side, Von Osbeck not able to track it. High pressure D coming from Maryland. They're looking for frets to turn it over. It's hard to do. She's very strong over the ball. Cannon has Brooke Barasic in front. Dina will keep an eye on Barasic. Cannon, and there's Dina. Cleans it up, but cleans it up efficiently, finding Von Osbeck. Now Dina will switch the point of attack to the left side, and Rissinger, Rissinger will push it to Pelzer. Pelzer just glides on the field effortlessly. Great movement coming through the midfield laterally for Maryland as well. One of the key signatures that you can have as a distributor in the center of the field like Holesborough, you can open up the ball to space and your body to space to give room and players around you the opportunity to really execute. Bramley dropped it just as she felt some pressure there from Von Osbeck. Jeannie Bramley holding the middle of the field very well, directly at the top of the circle. On Meyer Mark. in the circle, looking for Barasic, and that's Holiday kicking it out of there. It's important that Holiday gets some action and a touch on the ball as soon as she enters the game. Boosts your confidence, it gets your adrenaline going, and immediately switches you in the zone. Aurelia Meyer so dynamite on that baseline. Looking for Barasic on the opposite post. A couple of Penn State attackers inside the circle, unmarked. The chain's now coming. Duncan is in there, Ryder's also in there. Dancing with it outside of the circle. No whistle, they're letting him play. Officials have done a solid job here. You'd expect that. Championship Sunday for the Big Ten, Meyer. Marked by Dina, Meyer staying with it. Bramley was there, and Bramley apologizing for Myers. Really a Meyer. Taking a break for a moment. Number 23, just a sophomore. And she's gonna get a break. <laughs> Lene Gonzalez back in the midfield too from Maryland. 
We are in a break zone. Boy, this one has Big Ten Championship excitement, and why not? Two of the best. Penn State leads Maryland by a score of two to one. We're gonna crown a champion when we come back. Playing for that trophy right there, and Penn State came out of the locker room with all guns a-blazing. They needed to do that first half, not strong for the Nittany Lions. Off of a corner here, Aurelia Meyer knocks it home just underneath the body of Jenny Rizzo. And then again, you see Meyer, how well she can execute from the baseline. Jeannie Bramley puts the ball into space, gives her about one or two steps, and then reverse chip to the far corner. Phenomenal play coming from Bramley, a player who really has been phenomenal all tournament. Definitely consideration for the all tournament team. And depending on today's outcome, perhaps tournament's most valuable player consideration as well. Three goals in the tournament. Whistle. Holzbohr with the restart. Holzbohr into Rissinger. Flex. TD timeout on Championship Sunday with two incredible coaches. 29 years at Maryland, Missy Mahard, 30 years at Penn State for Char Moret Curtis. You know there was some serious instruction going on, and we'll see what comes of it. Laura Putch. What a move by Putch around Dina. Inside the circle. And it'll go out of bounds, and a penalty corner awarded Cassie Klein wearing number 14. Cassie Klein making a phenomenal cut in the upfield, and this was actually directed by Jeannie Bramley. As soon as Putch received it to the outside of the field, number 28 and right, gave some direction to Klein, who receives it and moves with speed. Finds the foot of Kerry Hanks, giving Penn State yet another corner here in the second half. Hutch with the insert. Second quarter now for Penn State. It's Putch putting that clock wind down, taking her time for sure. Hutch stopped. Dombrowski kicked away by Holiday now. Remember, here in the second half, Missy Mahard pulled Sarah Bates, the transfer from Penn State, and now it's Holiday with this save. Short corner going to the L1 and Dembrowski, and yeah, Holiday getting a great kick save away from danger out of the circle. Save number two already for Holiday. She got that one earlier on her first look at it. Julie Duncan has phenomenal speed going up the right side, but it's a little too forward. It'd be great if she could cut on some angles and try to find the inside of the field. Two corners each for both teams. Three saves for Maryland, two saves for Penn State. Shots on goal now. Penn State with five, Maryland with three. Renea Gonzalez. Perhaps the biggest stat of note right now, though Velma Luce and Grace Ballsden, the All Big Ten superstars, neither one of them with a shot on goal just yet. Of course, that means with balls in, limited penalty corners, of course. There is Velma Luce, your Big Ten Player of the Year. Natalie Cafone from Iowa winning your Offensive Player of the Year. Grace Boston, your Defensive Player of the Year. Katie Birch, also from Iowa, your Defender of the Year. And Standing about 20 yards from us, Char Moret Curtis, your Big Ten Coach of the Year, looking for career victory number 500. Velma Luce has only been playing on the Maryland field hockey team for three years, and if you look at her career stat, she has 44 career goals including six game winners this season. So even though there aren't many stats in her favor through the course of this game right now, this is a player that sticks to it. She fights for the entire game. 
Here comes Maryland, dangerous. Inside the circle, and I think they've earned a penalty corner just like that. And Velma Luce in the middle of it. Four goals last year in the championship game against Michigan. Great pull and deke out by Linnea Gonzalez. You see that small stick fake directly over the ball that really can pull a defender in one direction. Keeps it directly in front of her, goes on an angle towards the circle, and finds an open loose along the end line. Second penalty corner for Maryland. Velma Luce. Just as we talked about the fact she hadn't had a shot, it was a brilliant driven ball in front of the cage looking for Gonzalez that led to this penalty corner. Lane Holsborg will take the insert, look for Balsden to be at the end of this at some point. Rissinger, excellent stop roll. Just as I say that, it pops up on her. Balsden will try to clean it up. They'll do just that. Kept low by Pelzi, and front still loose with the Rizzo. Get down with her stick and knock it away. The helmets are off. And Penn State survives the penalty corner from Maryland. And sometimes on those miscue corners, that's usually when you can come away with the greater results and opportunity because you have to improv and become creative on making a non-play into a play. But Rizzo, wow, what a phenomenal stick save when she was on the ground. Well, you think about Sam Swenson from Michigan. Noelle Ruta from Indiana, and how about Jenny Rizzo from Penn State? Following the previous game, or following the game earlier this season between these two teams, Sharmara Curtis wanted Jenny Rizzo to be more aggressive. She wanted her to take more chances and be more aggressive as a result of that game. I think we've seen that today with Jenny Rizzo's play. Excellent point from my Michigan superstar, Kara Lentz. There's Charmarette Curtis. We told you, sitting on 499 total wins. Here's Aurelia Meyer. Meyer sent in, looking for Gokdow. What a turn on Gonzalez. And earning the penalty corner. How about that? Hip to hip for Gokdow on Gonzalez. And the fact that Aurelia Meyer even got this pass off in the first place. Two defenders on here just winds up straight through the the D, Lene Gonzalez directly on Gocknauer, but that was a good first touch by number four in white. Punch looking to perhaps order up some coffee and tea, taking her time with that 2 1 lead. A little gamesmanship. In no hurry. Punch. Gocknauer, Myers got one that way! And they won't count it. Ball too high in that shot. And Maryland now in good transition. Yeah, Maryland going the other way is really a Meyer. Kind of hung her head for just a moment as Meyer looks a little tired. She got a break earlier from Charmerette Curtis. It's 2-1, that's a lifetime of field hockey for Maryland. Take a look back at the corner opportunity. Same exact play design. Meyer looking to go to that left post, but ball too high in that direct hit. Selkos spun Rissinger down. We have seen some outstanding stick work. As Emma Rissinger never stops. Best Bovlander staying in, number 17, as Carol Lentz told you, played a little bit on semifinal Friday. Velma Luce doing a lot of work on that press, moving laterally. If she can come away with a turnover, if you put her directly in the circle, she can do a lot of damage, but she's doing a great job on that press so far. Morano and Dembrowski still running the show in the midfield for Penn State. Dina, as Pelzer will come on quickly for Maryland. Dina staying with it, dropping it over. Too strong for Mora Putsch. 
Lane Holsbor never hesitates with her decision making, with her passing, with her movement. This is a player that never hesitates, and if it isn't on forward to the side, she drops it back. Allowing her defense and her outside backs to get some better point of view services into the circle. Dina, the senior, look at the stick work there from Pelzer pulling it down, keeping possession, and now Dina will go backwards to go forward. Here's Brooke Adler. Look at where Grace Ballson is situated. In the 25-yard line. It's a lethal pass if it's coming from number four in the position where she is on the field. Good structure in the back for Maryland's defense. Hanks looking to get it far post, just hit it as hard as she could into the circle, hoping to find it through, and Rissinger was almost there. Again, just salivating, sitting off that far post. A little bit of a bouncy shot coming across the circle, which is great for the defense, because that's a hard ball to play. If you get one touch on it, that's unpredictable against the goalkeeper. There's seven minutes remaining. Holzbohr picked up quickly. Backside of the stick, free hit coming out. Maryland has not lost here at the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex since September 11, 2015 to Albany, two to one. And they've won their last 19 home games. And also a dynamite record against the Big Ten, 35 and one against Big Ten opponents here in College Park. Boston has moved over more to the right side as Hanks now central is Boston pushing up. Missy Mahar wants to talk to her team about it. She'll get the strategy board ready as well. Two of the best coaches in the business, two of the best teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe looking for a Big Ten championship. And Penn State leads Maryland 2-1. to one. Here's Velma Luce, Jenny Rizzo, number five. She's had a big save today as well, a couple of them. The Penn State Nittany Lions have not beat Maryland since 2007. And they're under six minutes away from breaking that streak and giving Charmarette Curtis her career 500 victory. But that's a lifetime against Maryland when you think about it. Six minutes will be a long, long time. Maryland has pulled their goalkeeper in Sarah Holiday and has added a kicking back, and that's Kelly LePage, who's wearing the neon penny that you'll see on the field. There's LePage. Penny still with her number 14, so as the kicking back. And the liberties of the goaltender. Keep an eye on her as the pages. She's available as well, so it's Dina. Luce was calling for it. Rissinger's there. You can seriously feel the electricity in the air here at College Park. Hanks trying to drive it in. We'll see if Penn State can get out of this pressure with Maryland. Leaving the goal free right now. Neither Bates or Holiday are out there. Penn State staff, Charmarette Curtis, Lisa Bervinchak Love, Stuart Smith, Simon Blanford, Anna Zamora, the strength trainer was directing traffic yesterday, demanding excellence even during their walkthrough. As Aurelia Meyer looking to come back on. And here comes Meyer. Last shot for Luce was 10 minutes ago.
Hosbor, Rissinger, and the whistle. Meanwhile, Missy Mahard's coaching staff, Yopa DeBreeze, Stephanie Fee, Joanne Engstrom. Holzbohr, Rissinger. Maryland's doing a good job of containing the ball inside their offensive end of the field. Meyer in a battle with Ballston. Power versus power. 23 versus four. As we approach the three minute mark in this one, Rissinger takes a shot to the face as she's okay as Carly Selkos, good sportsmanship. Selkos going high, Dina can't handle it. More a punch, can. Punch member, nobody's in the cage. Punch puts it over, Linnea Gonzalez is there in support. Maryland has pulled their goalkeeper. It's Velma Luce time. Maddie McGuire. McGuire calling for it quickly, 2.20. Remaining in this one. Holzbohr. Spinning in, Velma Luce calling for it, wants it. And she won't get it. And two Maryland attackers, Madison McGuire and Emma Rissinger, sitting on the far post inside of the circle with no defense applied, absolutely no marking. If a ball can get through that defense of Penn State and through the circle, there are two people who are wide open to play something on net. What a game. Penn State with eight shots, Maryland with seven, Penn State with five on goal, Maryland with four, and Penn State with two goals in the second half. Leads Maryland two to one with 140 remaining in this game. The goalie is pulled, LePage. And I believe a card issued to Jeannie Bramley. Wow. So for the remainder of this game, Penn State will be playing two players down. This really gives Maryland a unique opportunity. Incredible. Dina. Punch puts her hand up. 70 seconds, Holzborg in. Still loose, Rissinger looking to run it down. Holzborg calling for it, she'll get it. A minute five. Ballsden into the circle, spinning, Kelser in. Far post, loose, Rizzo. They're calling for the goal. Asking for a corner, Maryland is. There may have been an infraction or a foul that they saw. Quickly restarted the holes board back inside. Looking for Velma Luce. Yeah, I saw that too. I thought Velma Luce was going to connect on that one. Here we go, Penn State. 30 seconds away from their first Big Ten tournament title since 2012. And Aurelia Meyer heading down the sideline. 22 seconds. It'll stay with Penn State, the Nittany Lion faithful. You can see him in the middle of your screen, bouncing. They'll send it deep. 10. As we count it down, Charmaret Curtis with victory. Number 500 in the Penn State Nittany Lions on your 2016 Big Ten Field Hockey Tournament Champions. Hugs from